Hello lads, it's uh, been a while. Last video I did, I'd say it did pretty well, so I'm going to stick to the same formula. If you're not seeing any progress for a while in the gym, and even post deload week, which if you're not doing, please do those, I would recommend taking more rest days in general, as you may not be properly recovering. But that is speculation. First, I need to let you know that I'm only going to be covering the island nations, and none of the territories. I like to not talk about the current colonies and territories for the nations, as that will be feeding into my next topic. First, I want you to know about the island nations that you've likely not heard of, or you simply don't know anything about, and then I'll go into Australia, New Zealand. Shared culture amongst these island nations is not hard to find. Most island nations and multi-island nations are only nations because some British or Dutch guy showed up and said, y'all are Dutch, and then the natives said, what's a Dutch? And then they were killed. Beyond this area, is divided with the larger cultural umbrella, Austronesian. And within this, there is Melanesian, Micronesian, and Polynesian cultures. Even though these three subdivisions exist, each island and island chain is divided culturally. And what it means to be a member of any of these cultural groups is going to differ person to person. I'll also go through the major differences of the cultures very quickly. Melanesians are best known for being the only non-European people who have the ability to be blonde. Many Melanesians believe that the reason that the Europeans were able to colonize them so easily was because they simply had better cults than them, and they used to imitate their military marches with sticks, assuming them to be rituals. And during World War II, this was further exasperated, as if you're using spears as your main form of weapons, seeing flying death machines, it's reasonable to think it's magic. This imitation of marching and the practices of World War II soldiers was later referred to as being a cargo cult. Also, they believe that American and European-owned goods were actually intended for them, but were intercepted by Westerners, so they take them back. Micronesians, they are classified as a culture, almost only for ease of identifications. Look at all these subcultures. And further through their wiki article, they just say, yeah, they have similar creation myths with some form of mother. Thanks, I guess, but I'm not going into all this, so if you want to do it, do it yourself because I have no hope of doing this, and this script is already 12 pages long, and I'm in college. Finally, Polynesians. This is more commonly known in the West, and is covered much more in the media, which has led to this culture being very commodified. This culture has a big focus on family, and also birthright, which I'll cover more in depth in the country section. Also, apparently Chile owns Easter Island, and that's kind of funny. Final preparing culture throughout Oceania is British culture. Boo! The first country on our journey is going to be Papua New Guinea. They used to be a part of Australia physically, as they were part of the same supercontinent, and politically, because of the British. They keep having crises where the government collapses and forces the Aussie men to come and save them. So they're kind of like my friend's ex, because they're both an archipelago. Also, they have a bird on their flags, because it represents the intelligence of their leaders. Bird-brained. Speaking of birds, the wildlife there is incredibly beautiful, with their birds of paradise and tree kangaroos being common tourist attractions. I mean, look at these little guys. Too bad some of their birds are poisonous. Common cultural elements are hard to find about the country, as they have over 750 tribes. Honestly, Papua New Guinea is a bunch of tribes in a trench coat. Everything about this country is so loosely constructed that the border between them and Indonesia is literally just because people kept headhunting along the area, and it was redrawn for ease of the British and Dutch patrolling the area. So the men would stop having their heads cut off. Jaw-dropping decision. These tribes are very different culturally. Some of them have shell and vine currency, and they are given out times of great importance, such as marriage and birth and death. Some scar their bodies in order to look like the height of crocodiles with small incisions and have festivals about crocodiles. Some are avid practitioners of cannibalism and use it as a way of mourning people. You know, normal stuff. Cultural aside, the political aspects of the country are rather interesting with the aforementioned permanent government collapse. The GDP of their country is $25 billion, and they are rich in copper and gold. There's a region known as Gainville, which is autonomous, and is a mining town which produces 40% of the country's GDP, but it rarely sees its profits, and has led to many, many revolts, which have resulted in about 20,000 deaths. And the government itself, there have never been enough of a ruling party to establish a true government, and the temporary alliances within the government are broken very quickly. This is to the extent where they were forced to implement a 12 to 18 month ban on no confidence votes, as it was way too common before this. 
This has led for there to be no real funny person for me to talk about, like in the Central Asia video, and the rulers are typically thrown out before they can do any nonsense. Though the current Prime Minister has gone on record saying that he wants Papua New Guinea to be the richest black Christian nation. So interpret that as you will. Next on the chopping block is Fiji. I have a friend who has a friend from Fiji, so I'm not bothering to fact check all of this. This is a country that can be defined by debt. Essentially, there's this one chief named Kakobao, who conveniently converted to Christianity the moment he racked up a ton of debt to many other chieftains. So then the British started to like him. So they let him off the debt if he were to implement British friendly policies under the country that he ruled. So he created the Council of Chiefs who had run this newly formed country of Fiji. And Kakobao ordered all of the other chiefs to join so they would be a part of this country. They said, no, why the fuck would you do that? And then the British showed them why the fuck they would do that. So after conquering all the chieftains and making them join his kingdom, he immediately blew all of his money again, went into debt, sold the entire country of Fiji to pay it off, and ran away. Their main governing legislator is still known as the Council of Chiefs, and there's a debate on whether or not it should be actual chiefs or elected politicians. It was disbanded several times, but it is typically a cause of internal turmoil, as they have had four military coups since 1987 after all. Now for the politics, let's talk about the people. They have a drink which is called Grog, also looks like this. It's a herbal medicine, which is essentially just kapha powder, but still. Grog. Also, Fiji is reportedly the first country to ever do firewalking on stones, though now it serves mostly as tourism bait. Also, potentially it's a competition between Fijians and Indians. I don't really feel like reading this though. The international dateline can also be annoying to deal with with Fiji, with one island being able to stand in two different days at once. Also, supposedly Fiji thinks that coconuts have eyes, but the site I was using was clearly a tourist website for Fiji. Look at some of these so-called facts. I, I can feel the pain in this one. They have two frogs, and they have crocodiles that can fucking surf. Also, cannibalism was frequent until the 19th century, it was not outlawed until the 1970s. And I'm really hoping this is not going to be a theme. The third one on the block is the Solomon Islands, who in my research are just more schizoid Fiji. Like most of the islands in the nation, they are sinking, and they have an island called Kennedy Island, because JFK was once marooned there. Guess we know by global warming is really happening. The island was originally named Plum Pudding Island. It was renamed in honor of the president. At least he was able to take one island. The Solomon Islands had a time in their history called the Tensions, which sounds like off-brand the Troubles, the main difference between the two. It was more ethnic than religious, but they were both caused by British shenanigans. Also, the army names were much cooler. This country is also defined by conflicts of outside nations, with them being the staging ground for the Battle of Guadalcanal, with the wreckage from these various Japanese and American naval battles being attractions for scuba divers and billionaires alike. The Solomon Islands are really good at a variations of soccer, but not soccer itself. Like futsal, which is essentially soccer on hardwood, and beach soccer, which they are the best at, and they had natural championships under both sports. Their origin story is pretty interesting though. Supposedly a giant snake with a diamond on its head lives in the tallest mountain with a gold hoard underneath of him, and some of the people try to steal the gold causing the snake to get mad and attack the islanders, who all fled to other islands, except for one pregnant woman who gave birth to two twins who killed the snake. But he's still alive? I don't know. Okay, I'm just gonna go on like a micro rant real quick. Every country has some weird, disturbingly recent history of cannibalism. So for now on, I'm just gonna assume it because I'm not drawing all that. Next up, Micronesia. The country, not the culture. I don't know which name came first, but it would be much funnier if they just named a random island chain after a culture. This country was once part of the USA, which already makes the island great. Also, since they were so close to other countries like New Zealand and Australia, their cars have right-sided wheels, but since they're a former US colony, they also drive on the right. They have an island called Mog Mog, whose crab, Mog Mog all other crabs, which makes them our newest member of the liftocracy. And they do have a system of currency called Rai, which are circular rocks, but some of them are too heavy to move. So an actual conversation would go like, Hey, if you give me those 10 chicken, you can say you own this rock. Sounds good to me. They are home to one ancient city on a coral reef, and have a territorial dispute with the Spanish, but the Spanish don't even care. They also have a similar drink to kava called sacao, 
I'm going to be honest with you, it's just kava. A cultural tradition they have is called love sticks, where you poke your crush with them, and they'll pull your stick if they accept. It's made of wood, you dirty-minded bastards. Also, supposedly, the creators of one of their ancient cities is a dragon to help them. I wonder if he's related to the snake. On an unrelated note, many of these countries suck to live in because of the crime and whatnot, and the video I was watching on one of them, from one of the natives, said it's because people from Chuk, one of the provinces, can't handle alcohol. Next, we move on to Vanuatu. Vanuatu research is very hard to come by. Like, there isn't even a Geography Now video that I can take the funny bits from. And all of the videos on YouTube are essentially just white people treating these people like a zoo exhibit, so their information is about as reliable as mine. Not at all. But what I could find, however, this country was a mixed colony of the French and English settlers, which often caused conflict. It was to the point, when visiting the island, you could pick between which country's laws system you chose. Another bit was there was a war of independence called the Coconut War, in which a cargo cult who worshipped John Frum, an American World War II soldier, led an uprising and declared independence. The sides are the islands that I've covered so far versus the Libertarians of Nevada, France, and the previously described rebels, whose leader was named Jimmy, also known as Moses, and had 23 wives and 14 dozen children. Just so you know, this group still has a seat in Parliament, whose political religion reads as John Frum. Could you imagine having the people who just attempted a revolution still having a party? Fuck. Speaking of John Frum, there's a movement called the Prince Philip Movement, which believes that Prince Philip is the brother of John Frum, and also a mountain god. And upon his death, many of the islanders entered a period of mourning. Though the stark difference in reaction to Prince Philip, with many on the internet mocking his death, and the, on the other hand, it put entire peoples into mourning. I know this just kind of turned into a cargo cult explanation, so I'll move on. This country is crazy for pigs, and is used in most forms of exchange, even with foreign nations. Pigs are important to the point where pig's blood is the red which is represented on their flag. One final thing, they were the first bungee divers, but they used vines. Next up is the land of the best offensive lineman, Samoa. This place is the big boss of Polynesia, or at least for cultural exposure. If you're a Samoan, then you are inherently royalty in Polynesia, kinda. Also, this will be referring to Western Samoa, aka the non-American one. A lot of the idea and intrigue of these videos is learning new things, and Samoa and Samoan people are very prevalent throughout the media, and is pretty well represented, which is rare for an island chain nations. So since this video script is already the same length as my previous video, and I still have seven more countries, I'm just going to rattle some stuff off. Samoa claims to be a democracy, while all of the parliament and the head of state are required to be from royal families. So more of a monarchy that calls itself a democracy, rather than the more common democracy which calls itself a monarchy. But remember how I said that they're all royalty? Yes, this makes it a democracy disguising itself as a monarchy disguising itself as a democracy. Odd. Anyway, back to just rattling it off. Their dateline was changed for trade. Their tallest mountain translates to Mount Highest. People play one of their more well-known instruments to be unique at parties for just annoying. And people who are unconnected with their culture get incorrect Samoan tattoos, but use it for publicity. Next up is Kiribati, a country that is made up of atolls. So it's kind of terrible to live there, with many of the basic amenities that we have simply not existing there. They're trying to plant mangroves to slow down the water rise, but it's essentially like putting a band-aid on a 50 cow wound. Which I guess is better than nothing, but no. Kiribatian cities are also really funny, because they kind of did the Ohio thing, where they just named cities after places in Europe, like Paris, London, Poland, Banana. It's actually pronounced Kiribati, but nobody cares, because the island's sinking into the ocean, and it's far too late to stop it. Remember all of those, if we don't cut carbon emissions by X date, this will happen? Yeah, well, we passed most of those dates now, and by 2050, we're going to be dealing with an insane homelessness crisis with a shitload of refugees. People have inhabited this island for 3,000 years, and for something completely out of their control, this is going to be the last generation on the island. It isn't just companies that don't care about these islands. It seems like everyone just kind of does what they want with them. The British just decided to nuke the islands to protest that they found out when you nuke something, it stops existing. I feel like I could have told you that one, but sure. Japan didn't care about them and occupied them, though that was pretty common for them. 
and the U.S. didn't care about them. It kind of just forgot that they were a U.S. territory for a while. And the whole world didn't care about them, because when dividing the world, they made them into the northern, southern, eastern, and western hemispheres, which you could imagine is a logistical nightmare. They didn't completely screw them, because if you've ever seen that odd bulge in the dateline and wondered why it exists, it's just so Kiribas isn't in logistical hell. It's just purgatory. It also seems as if they themselves don't care about the country, as they have one road, which is so poorly maintained, it makes Philadelphia and South Carolina's roads look brand new. Also, for a while, their politicians didn't even care enough to form a party, and all just kind of ran as independents. Call of Duty cared, though, and they featured their island as the island that you start out in in the Pacific campaign during Call of Duty World at War. Thanks, Cod. It's Tonga time. I always wanted to do that. Well, it seems like Kiribati is a clusterfuck. Trust me, this country is significantly worse. So we'll get this out of the way. This country is a constitutional monarchy, but if in a traditional constitutional monarchy, the powers between parliament and the monarch were flipped. In fact, there were riots in 2006 because the parliament wasn't doing anything, and their whole promise was to fix the system. Hey, those people outside look really angry, and they want us to actually do something. It'll be fine. It looks like there's a fire. I think we gotta get out of here. Hang on, I'm finishing this game of Clash Royale. Done. This may be true in other countries, but I have not seen it in other countries. But minimum in Tonga, the whole tattoo thing that you frequently see with Polynesian cultures is just like a familial crest in literally every way. To those who are younger, they think of it as a cool piece of culture. But to those who are older, they see it more as a symbol of the nobility that ravages this country. It isn't all gloom and doom though. Their islands sink and rise a lot due to volcanic activity. This said volcanic activity led to two coral reefs being in questionable territory, so three groups claimed it. Fiji said that no one could own it since it was a coral reef. Tom claimed it as their own, and some random libertarian guy claimed it as his territory and tried to start his own random micronation, prompting the first two claims. Next up is the Marshall Islands. Imagine Kiribati, but it's an American puppet state, and everyone's leaving. Also, this is where Bikini Atoll is. This country was underwhelming. Next up is Palau. This country is very small in population, with the capital only having 400 people, and one of their states only having 43 people in it. Also, they get more tourists per year than they have local residents, which makes this economy almost exclusively tourist-based. A lot of the country and culture is similar to other island nations, though. There are five official languages in the country, two of which are spoken by 600 people, and the others being Japanese English because of this little-known event. Also, there's influence from Filipinos as they were once a member of the first Filipino Republic under Spain. Also, Germany made a fuss about them in World War I, but they had bigger issues, and they recognize a mysterious country. Next up is Nuaru. This country is somewhat well known, at least if you do political science or study human condition. This country is small. Like, really small. So I can get things wrong here and not have more people yelling at me in the comments. The reason it's famous is that the country is currently eating away at its own territory. Essentially, birds pooped there, and bird poop became a rock. This rock is super valuable for fertilizer, which is their main export, or was. But that was what the island was made out of. You can see the issue that may arise. Also, there was a camp there for refugees, who was rejected by Australia, but it wasn't run by Nuaru, but rather a private Australian organization, which had terrible treatments for them. Also, they tried to become a tax haven willingly, but it didn't work. Libertarians just don't like this country, apparently. Tuvalu! This country is even less populated, and the only country that has less population is the Vatican, so, yeah. This country is so small, that the population likes to play soccer on their one airport, and one of their biggest exports is their country do name name, which is .tv, which they use to join the UN, as they could not afford the joining fee. This country also has globally the lowest GDP, but it also has the least people, so, yeah, what do you expect? And, uh, yeah, that's about it. I'm not going to be doing IR like I did in the last video, so I'd simply never upload again, and do like I did with Samoa, just kind of rattle facts off. Never mind, fuck that, it's already 30 minutes long, and they're all mostly friends. Originally, I wasn't going to do Australia and New Zealand, 
but my roommate's Australian, and I found out about this magnificent man named Bob Ketter. First is better New Zealand, Australia. And here's a slight bit of lore about the country before we dive into the bullshit. Canberra is the capital right now. The reason that it is the capital, because Melbourne, which was a big city near Sydney, wanted to be the capital. But so does Sydney, and Sydney had the original claim to be the capital. Melbourne bitched until it changed, which I have no idea how that worked. During the Vietnam War, the Australian Prime Minister didn't want to be in Vietnam, but the US and the UK didn't like that. So they declared his government illegitimate and kicked him out of parliament. And then their opposition, who supported the war in Vietnam, became the Prime Minister's instead. Now on to the Prime Minister. Harold Holt once went for a swim while in office and just disappeared forever. Fucking what? Next up is Tony Abbott, when trying to prove how fresh Australian produce was. He picked up the first thing that he could find and took a bite out of it. It was a raw onion. In a different supermarket, he goes up to an old man to try and do some more, you know, constituent pulling-ass things, and then is called a dickhead. Finally, Scott Morrison. One day, when the 2020 wildfires were happening, he just kind of disappeared. They lost their prime minister twice. They then found him vacationing in Hawaii, though. He shit himself in a McDonald's, and he randomly spear tackles children when playing games. Also, apparently, West Australia has an independence movement, though it's very weak, and I'm sure someone living there wouldn't even know that. And now the funniest politician I've seen in a while. More batshit than the bookman himself, Bob Catter. He's the oldest member of parliament, and in his time, he's gotten up to some horseshit. He dressed up as the Grim Reaper to protest a bill he didn't like. He says, that he didn't support gay rights because there are too many crocodiles attacks in his district, and that's more important. He denied gay people even existing in his district and said that if there were, he would walk backwards throughout his entire district. When gay people from there asked him to do it because they existed, he kindly told them to fuck off. He calls himself an Australian nationalist and an agrarian socialist, so he's modeling his philosophies off for a certain Chinese man. He's a leader of his own party, and he is the only member of the party on the national level, with all other members just being within his district. He also once threw eggs at the Beatles. Next is better Australia, New Zealand. Did you know that Lord of the Rings was filmed here? Now, here's a funny battle called the Battle of Gate Pa. The British come to a village, tell the Maori to surrender. They don't. Then they bombard a flag because European custom was for the flag to be in the center of the city. So if you bombed around the flag, you would normally hit something important. The Maori didn't do this, and the British bombed a random area in a field for several days. They landed and bombed them on land, but the Maori were in bunkers. It was like a cartoon where the main character conveniently had a counter to all of the villain's plans. It is illegal to have nuclear weapons, and it makes it a pain in the ass for military operations from foreign nations with subs with nuclear capabilities. As a result of their anti-nuclear policies, they were harboring French activists who were anti-nuclear bombs. They were on a ship with civilians, and the French just fucking sank it, and then refused to elaborate. Also, you know how in the States, how people will call themselves Native American and be like, 2% Native American? Both of these two islands have that issue, but it's really bad in New Zealand. Closing thoughts time. Uh, I think that you should go watch uh, this video right here. But uh, if you want to stay to the end of this one, go ahead. When researching Micronesia, Polynesia, and the Melanesian Islands, it's just kind of, just kind of sad the whole time. I don't tend to put super sad stuff in here, but researching the deaths of many cultures and also just the ethnic conflicts and wars is just kind of bumming me out. And the living conditions there are just terrible. Anyway, Bob Catter is the funniest politician, worthy of a case study. Plus, I need to get this whole 3 uploads in 90 days things for monetization. Though I finished the writing of the script on September 17th, so, you know, whenever this gets uploaded. Yeah, wow, I did not uh, come anywhere close to September, October, Jesus.